what is a coupon bond? Basically, a coupon bond is a bond that promises periodic equal uh, interest payments in addition to the repayment of the face value at the end of the loan term. When we say face value, the face value is actually the amount the issuer promises to pay once the bond reaches maturity. Okay, it is actually also referred to as the legal value or uh, the power value of a bond or say redemption value. Okay, so if you see uh, legal value the same as the face value. So in a situation like this, we use a present value principle and present value of annuity principle, which is necessary to calculate the YTM, say the yield to maturity. And this is because the equal sum of payment will be the annuity, while the payment of the face value will be one of that required principal uh, value. So when we use example, we may actually understand what I mean by this you would understand what I mean by this so let's take for instance uh, Kofi borrowing amount of thousand okay so we are going to use the previous values we used for the fixed payment loan so we are saying the borrowing amount is thousand the under CDs the period is 10 years the Payment is going to be 120 CDs for the 10 years. And at the, uh, so we see that the terms of the loan specify that an annual amount of 120 should be paid for 10 years. And on the 10th year, the principal sum should be paid in order to defray the total cost. That is the principal plus interest of the loan. So we are basically going to use a different PV formula to find the IRR. We are still going to use the IRR that we used, which we said that is A plus what? NPV A divided by NPV A minus NPV B or multiplied by B minus A. Great. But the PV we are going to use here is going to be the cash flows Say the cash flows, the uh, present value, where that we, we are going to use this formula that we used initially one plus R and over what R. But in this case, we are saying that at the tenth year, by the end year, the tenth year, the person should pay the principal sum. Okay, the principal that we invested, that is a thousand. You have to pay it, okay, in order to defray the loan. So at the and here you have to find the present value of that thousand Ghana CD that is going to be like. So we have a thousand Ghana CDs present value. So this thousand going to be paid in the future can be like a future value whereby we are finding a discount of it. So we're going to have one over one plus R. And here we are interested in the present value of the face value, which was thousand. Okay. So we try our hands using the values that we have, 120 and the rest. So here we have 120 as the cash flows. Then we try with uh, 10. Okay, we try with interest rates at 10 and we also try with interest rates at 15. Okay, so we're going to have 1 over 1.1, 1 .1, 7 and 10 over 0 0.2. One plus the face value of the loan, which is thousand, which is also the legal or the redemption value or power value. Then I'll have one over. I'm using R to be ten. One point one is to ten. The final answer I get here is going to be thousand one two two. 0.891 as my PV. I have to find the net present value, which is going to be this PV minus the amount that we borrowed. So I have one one two two point eight nine one minus thousand. 
and that gives me 122.891 remember we say we want to get a rate at which NPV will be positive and another at which NPV will be what negative here the NPV is what positive and when the NPV is positive we say that the interest rate we use can be likened to that of A because interest rate for A or it is the one that makes NPV positive or makes it higher and we also note that the relationship between NPV and interest rate is inverse the higher the NPV we can say the, the higher the interest rates the lower the NPV and then the lower the interest rate the higher the NPV we use in I to be or R to be 10 and then we got this positive so you want to get a lower NPV what do we do to this one the relationship should be is, is, is inverse. If you want to get a lower NPV, what do we do? We can increase the interest rate. So we we'll increase the interest rate from 10 to say 15. And then we'll test to see what we are going to get. So at interest rates of 15%, our PV is still going to be, we have the cash flows 120, 1 minus 1 over. 1 plus 0 point what 15 exponent 10 all over 0 point 15 plus thousand then 1 over 1 plus 0 point 15 exponent 10 when we do the simplification we are going to arrive at a lower mpv with a lower present value which gives us a value of uh, eight four nine point four three five nine this is the value i get so i would also have to find the npv for that i'm not going to use this formula again so let me clean it and find so i'll say okay so this is going to be the a so my b is 15 percent npvb is equal to this 849 minus 849.4359 uh, minus 1000 which gives us a negative value of 150.5641 now we can find the IRR by substituting the values into it so let me clean this you have to note the values, okay? The value should be in your head. So we have A being 10%, NPVA being equal to 122.891, B being 15%, NPVB being equal to negative 150.5641. Do substitution into the formula. We have 10 plus 122.891 or divided by 122.891 minus, minus 150.5641 or multiply by B minus A, which is what 15 minus 15% 15 minus 10%. Great, so this is percent. You do the calculation and you are going to have IRR being equal to 12.247%. So that is finding the yield to maturity using coupon bond. We are now going to look at perpetual fixed coupon payment bond now the word perpetual means forever so we are going to pay the thing forever how do i then solve such a question so a perpetual fixed coupon payment bond is a bond that pays coupon on it forever and coupon rate is actually the interest rate paid throughout the bond's life and when we say coupon coupon simply means interest payment the interest okay so when we say perpetual fixed coupon payment bond i repeat by saying it's the bond that pays coupon on it forever 
right? It is also termed as console. C O N S O L console. The holder of a console actually enjoys the coupon amount of the console forever. And the determination of the interest rate of a console is a simple formula. Okay. And uh, we look at the valuation of perpetuity. So the console's value is going to be like P equals C over I, where the P is the price, P is price, the C is the coupon or the interest, and the I is the, the interest, it's the interest rate, the rate. So if I want to find the I, what do I do? I can just do a change of subject, okay? When I do the change of subject, my I is going to be C divided by P. C divided by P. So somebody may say I've jumped, let me take my step. So I have P equal to C over I. I want to make I the subject. I can first multiply through by I. I have I times P. C over I times I, this I will cancel this I out. Now have I times P equal to what C. I'm interested in making I the subject. What do I do? What's the inverse of multiplication? The inverse of multiplication is division. So if I want to get rid of this, which is multiplying the I have to divide by P. So I have this canceling this, resulting in I equal to what C over P. So that is what we are going to focus on. So using the perpetuity formula here, you can say that I is going to be what C over P. Keep this one in mind. Now let's try and take an example. For this, we see that uh, Kofi bought a console for four, three, five gamma CDs. So the price is what? Four, three, five gamma CDs. And promises to pay a coupon of 50 Ghana cities. We want to determine the yield to maturity on this bond or the interest. So we we'll just put it into the formula. You have what? 50 divided by 4, 3, 5. And the answer is going to be 11.49%. The answer is actually a decimal, which is 0 0.1149. Okay, but when you multiply it by 100, you get this one. Okay, we can also try and use uh, the approximate yield formula. Now, the approximate yield formula is given by yield to maturity, approximate, so approx is equal to C plus FV minus P over N, all divided by FV plus P, all over 2. Now the FV here is the face value of the bond. P is the price of the bond. N is the number of years to maturity. And the number 2 there is always constant. It's always constant. Let's try and take an example for that and then we we'll solve to see how we can actually do so. So let's say we want to determine the approximate yield on a 10-year bond. That promises a coupon of 10%. And it is being sold at a price of 9.45. So let me write the values. So I first clean my the part of this part of the board. I say that the N number of years is 10 years. Uh, the price is 945. I say the coupon is actually the coupon paid or promised is 10 percent, but we're not giving the face value. We're not giving the face value. So we can assume that the face value is. 
So assuming that the F A is thousand Ghana cities, if I assume that the F A is thousand Ghana cities, that means that to get a C, which is the ten percent, the C is going to be ten percent of thousand is what hundred. So I can find the Y T N approx to be hundred plus thousand minus nine four five divided by n which is the number of years or divided by the face value thousand minus thousand plus nine four five divided by two when we solve this we are going to get ten point eight five percent ten point eight five percent 10.85 percent we can then look at the final one which is the discount bond